Okay, so, so this is the work I did um, together with Professor Simon Thompson. Uh, I'm from University of Kent. Um, it's about uh, profiling Erlang programs on multi-core systems. Uh, in particular, this is done in the release project. So I'm going to say a few words about release, and then I'm going to talk about the Percept, which is a profiling tool from the Erlang distribution. Um, so we didn't start from scratch. Instead, we use Percept, which we think is nice, and uh, try to make it nicer. And so we, we got a new version of Percept, which we call it Percept 2. And then I'm going to show you a small um, a sh a case study with using Percept to parallel um, a component of Wrangler, which is a uh, refactoring tool we have um, developed. Um, so first, Erlang Multicore, as you all know, I'm sure you know um, Erlang has um, built-in support for Multicore, which means if you have multiple machine and you start the Erlang node, by default, you're going to get multiple schedulers, and which means you, 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 you're able to run things in parallel and make your program more effective. So here is the release project. It's a, it's a three year project which inclu um, uh, includes a number of universities from, from the UK, from Sweden, Greece, and a, a few companies. And so the main idea of this project is to um, build a scalable version of distribute alarm, which actually means we, we built a new library which is allows you to distribute our skills better. And the main idea come out now so far is the, the notion of S groups, which means uh, scalable groups. Um, like global group, the Erlang global group, um, S groups allows you to group nodes into groups. But uh, uh, unlike global group, like which has to, you had to group uh, groups into, you have to group nodes into partitions, but S groups allow you to, allow the, the groups to be overlapped, so you can establish a hierarchical structure. So we, um, at Kent University, we our task is to build tools to allow you to make use of the um, multiple systems more effectively. Um, there is already a number of tools from, for tracing and profiling Erlang. For example, we've got Erlang built in trace, tracing, which is very powerful. You don't have to change your program. You don't have to, to recompile it, just, just start and stop the tracing and then stop it. And there's a number of tools built on top of the Erlang built in trace, like DBG, eTOP, TTB. And for functions, we have iProof, eProof, and CProof, and so on. And we also have a Percept, which is for concurrency programs. And different from the Erlang built-in trees, you have the D trees, which come with the latest uh, Erlang distributions, which is uh, dynamic tracing, and, and some other tools. And so here, we, what we studied with Percept, um, um, Percept is, and you, you may have tried it from, because it's part of the Erlang distribution, is for profiling concurrent prog Erlang programs. Uh, it was mainly written by Bian Ego Dahlberg, um, it is built on top of the Erlang built-in trace, so it makes use of Erlang trace um, beef and some functions like Erlang system profile. And I, was, I should say it's not on, on live profiling tool, it's offline profiling tool, which means you have to profile, trace your program, run your program, trace your program, and then get the data and analyze the data, then you got profiling information. It means you replay your computation. Um, so Percept provides a number of functionalities. For example, it has the uh, histogram of active process, and any time during the execu execution of the program, you can, you can from a PID, you can um, view the information about the particular process, such as the start time, end time, or parent children processes, or time information, and so on. And you can also, um, select a few processes that you are interested in and compare their runability. And another nice feature about Perceptive is allow you to zoom in to a particular period of your execution, so you got more detailed data about that time interval. Um, here's what you use, um, um, you get if you, um, if you profile, if you choose your program and the analyze the data and then start the web server, and it's of, yeah, Percept is web page, it's got the web page interface here. Um, so what you see here is um, 
uh, the horizontal x y x um, axis the time and the y axis is the number of um, um, active processes which gave you um, um, over about how many processes are active at any time of the execution. I mean, active means that the process is runnable. It doesn't mean it's running, but it means it's runnable and um, it's not blocked. Um, here you can see a list of um, processes and some, uh, some um, basic information about the entry port name or parent process. Of, and you can, you can select, the, take these processes and compare their runnability. Like here you, you see um, what, um, at the bottom part you see at what time the process is runnable and what time the process is blocked. Uh, so this is perceived. Um, and for us, we, we start from perceived, we try to um, make it more, uh, make it better, um, provide more functionality and make it more usable. So we, we extend percept in both functionality and also scalability. So on, on bottom is percept, on top of it, we, got, we had added new functionalities such as uh, the schedule information, because um, we're working on multiple systems and multiple schedulers there, so we review the schedule, scheduler utilization information, um, process communication, uh, the migration process uh, between run queues. We, as you saw, um, just the previous slides, uh, percept doesn't distinguish runnable and running. If you see the green, it means it's, it's, it's possible it's the process is running or it's not running but runnable. So with percept two, we distinguish runnable and running. Um, also, we add function level profiling information. So we create dynamic context where core graphs for, our, for process. And also provides the, the, uh, the run, uh, accumulated t run time of process or fun and function. And also so added the basic support for distribution and so on. Um, for scalability and usability, we as you saw the previous one, you got long, the flat list of process, there's no structure there, so we, we create a scalable process tree structure, so the, your web page won't blow up because of many, too many processes. And we catch history web pages to make it faster, and the more important, we try to parallel the analyzation process of Percept 2, so, it's, so uh, instead of parallel analyze one single file, we allow process to analyze multiple trees files in parallel. Um, so these are the basic features we have added to Percept. Oh, together makes Percept too. Um, so now I'm just going to talk you through what Percept looks like, what functionality mm, are here in more detail. Um, before, oh, okay. before that, I, I tell you how to use Percept. To. So there are a few ways you can you can uh, profile a program. If it's, the application is not big, it's, it's a small application, and you know the entry function of the application, so you can choose to profile the whole run of the application. So here, you, to profile, you, you specify the file which is going to uh, store the trace data here, and the entry function of the application, and some options. Here is options, so you, you can you don't have to pr profile choose everything in one go. So you can choose to choose a particular aspect of your um, application. For example, you can choose to just to check the process running runnability, or you can choose the schedule information or running message passing. If you want to choose all of this information, just use the all option, which covers all the options above it. And it also allows you to specify um, which uh, module you are interested to, to for function profiling. So here you can, if you want to generate a core graph, you can specify a list of modules you want to trace. Um, for file spec here, uh, you can choose to uh, to write trace that into a single file, but you can also use a wrap, a way in which uh, you create um, a collection of trace files. Uh, so you specify the base file name, the, the suffix, and the size of each trace file, and how many um, the maximum trace files are going to be created. And this is uh, when you want to profile the whole application run. 
Um, another way is if you if you have a very big application, it's just not possible to profile the whole application. You can just profile a time slice of your app application. So it means you can st start profiling while your application is running, and then stop it when you think, okay, I got enough data now, uh, dynamically. So you don't have to change anything about your program. Just start it and then stop it. Um, another way, if you like, you you, you want to a profile a particular part of application. If you like, you can instrument the code and to insert these two commands into your code. And so you want to profile a particular uh, part of the code. That could be useful as well. Um, this is the commands for starting percept. So once you have run your application, you got the, the trace data there. So you you, you use the Percept to analyze to analyze your data. So again, if you it, mm, this function take a list of files. If you load the file, the trace study into a single file, just provide um, a single file name. Otherwise, you can provide and <coughs> allow Percept to analyze multiple files in parallel. And after an analyzation, um, Percept actually create a database storing all the trace information needed, and you, then you start web server, and so you, you can see the, 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 what the, the, um, the, the slides I showed you before in you know, the web <coughs> interface. And so this is basically how you uh, profile, analyze, and visualize your data, it's the commands. So here is an um, uh, example. Um, this, uh, uh, this is, um, I show you how to visualize uh, the result. Um, this uh, overview page is the same as Percept. As you look, you see th um, this application run. Actually, th this, uh, I think this data was, um, uh, I got data by profiling a famous dialyzer tool uh, to check, tap check the uh, kernel library. So uh, you can see uh, it's my laptop got four schedulers and got, uh, that actually creates nearly 5,000 processes. And here you see uh, the a few peaks here means um, you quite suddenly that creates a lot of processes and suddenly it goes down because most of those processes are blocked. It's not, they're not active anymore and that's why you see the, the lower base here. So this is um, the overview part. And you, you can, here at the bottom, you, you can, it's a process, so you can, if you get a list, if you select uh, um, schedulers, it's going to show the utilization of schedulers, which means, because the maximum schedule here is four, you see in what time um, the schedulers are fully utilized, what time only part of the scheduler are active. Um, so that gave you a sense um, like when, um, when I fully used the resources, when I'm not from using the resources. Um, another tab, if you look at the top, there's a few tabs over there. So if you um, press the, the process tab you got here, this is like uh, what I say, this a structured process tree. So you, you, can, you can click the plus sign to expand it or collapse it if you press the minus sign. So here we, we added more information to the original percept. Uh, one is you can see the information about run queue changes and about information about message uh, sent, receive. So the run queue changes tells you how many time, um, times the process migrated from one run queue to another. Is uh, sometimes can can be quite. For example, this the bottom one it migrates about one more than one thousand times. Um, the, the data about the message sent received. The first element in the tuple is uh, the number of messages sent or received. The second is the, uh, is the average average size of the message sent or received. I think it's in bytes. Um, so if I say it's is expandable, if you click plus sign, you can go further down here. And here you may notice a few things here. Um, because say this example, you got nearly 5,000 uh, processes. If we put in a single one table, you got huge table. So it's really hard to navigate. So what we did here is uh, we 
here, we look at the, the entry function of a process. You may all notice quite a lot of processes actually have the same pairing, have the same entry uh, functions. Basically, they are doing a very similar job. So we don't have to, in this case, we, there's no need. We list all of them here. So um, we only uh, list um, for each this kind of process which have the same entry function, uh, same pairing, only list one of these. So if we, we list this one, and for the others, we comp comprise them to one single dummy process. Um, but uh, it doesn't mean you can't get access to information about those hidden processes. If you, uh, if you click on the, 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 the dummy PID here, you can see which processes are hidden there. Um, so uh, all the PIDs um, are clickable here. So if you if you click one one of the PIDs, or you, you may get um, you, you get um, uh, the information about this particular process, which contains uh, the information um, included in this page. Also, such as um, the parent children process, the time and um, the message passing. Um, here, uh, in the previous page, you see the total number of migrations. And this one, it gives a list of, here, gives you the migration history. So it's, it's in this case, means you migrate from rank Q1 to two, then to one, then to four. So it gave you the complete history of migration. And the bottom bit with this, um, from the original percept to us, so it, it tells you how much time this process spent on waiting. Um, and where. Um, so here gives you the, the, um, uh, the total runtime of this process um, as well. <coughs> and back to this page, uh, at the bottom you see uh, there are a few links and buttons here. Um, if you press the press trees graph, here, this option, it also gives you the graph representation of the process tree. And here, again, we compress, the compressed version means we don't create a huge core graph, and you, but you, still you can see the structure of the process tree. And so all of these nodes are clickable. So if you click one of the nodes, and it goes to um, the information about this particular process. Um, so another option is um, process communication. Um, what we, because um, on this page, what we, sh we show you the if some information about a message sent received, but doesn't tell you which mess which process to which process. There's no corresponding between processes. So if you press the process communication communication button, we show the actual uh, sent. Um, between process, from which process to which process. Here, you see this graph, and the, the first tuple on the label is the number of times message sent from the, the, mm, from the process to target process, and the second is the, the average size of the message. Um, when you have many, many processes like this case, then it's really um, likely that you create a huge graph here, and it's really hard to navigate it. So we allow you to, to simplify it. You specify, because most of the time you don't worry about those small message sendings. You only worry about big message, heavy communication between processes. So you can specify a threshold. So the first is uh, the minimum number of sends. The second is the average size of the message. And this allows you to simplify the graph and to like you to, to, to focus on those parts which you really want to have a look. So in this kind of example, you will inc increase the threshold and will only show those um, heavy um, message passings between processes. So this helps you to focus on the most really um, uh, interesting part. Um, there's another thing um, in you can do is you tick the process um, the boxes here. You want to compare the runnability. Um, of course, if there are too many messages process, you can you can choose to ignore those uh, hidden processes or those children places like this. This ticks, uh, but in the example, I think I ticked all of them. So we want to compare the the runnability of those processes. So what I get here, um, if you if you press the, the 
the compare button, and you see the runnability um, of this process. Actually, uh, here I, because um, I can't show the whole, all of the process, but uh, I got somewhere. Um, oh, here. Um, so you see, these all all these processes are listed here, um, but uh, like most most process doesn't take exit for a long time, but I spend the most time on on waiting for an activation. Um, this is because if you want to talk a previous one, because a dialyzer, uh, it optimizes um, the way on how processes are activated. So it only actives uh, um, the number of activities, the process is roughly the same as the number of uh, um, schedulers, logical schedulers. So the reason so you reduce the time process spent on waiting, but runnable, but not running, so save memory. Um, but uh, you could also see some other cases which are not so optimized. So like this example, you see um, the, the, the orange part means the, progress, the process is running, but because there's no um, resources available, it's waiting, it's waiting. And the green part means the, the process is actually running. And the white bit means the process is blocked or waiting for messages. So it gives you a clear picture to see how much time the process is um, spent, and the process time is spent on waiting, running, or runnable. Uh, it also allows you to see some bad smells in your code. For example, in this case, you see one of the process is really heavy loaded, but others, others not. So this gives you some idea, okay, maybe I need to, mm, to refactor my code to make the, the workload between process more balanced. And sometimes you can also see a picture like this. So you got lots of pictures, but really short-lived. Some of these are blank because the time is so 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 short we can't show it. But if it's not uh, got a very short time, but it's, it may you you may want to see what's going on, what codes this process are executing. So so it can give you quite a lot of information here. And so a uh, functional pro profiling. So the reason I want to add functional function profiling to to perceive it because, for example, in this case, I see one of the processes really heavy loaded. I want to see what code the process is executing. So where, um, on how much time is spent on a function, a particular function. So, but um, perceived doesn't provide any um, function information. That's why we add it to to percept. Um, but there are quite a few um, function profiling tools already in Erna, like iProof, eProof, Carvel, or CProof. But the thing is, um, um, iProof gives very complete information, but it's really slow. <coughs> eProof um, <coughs> is, um, is okay, but it doesn't give enough information, because I want to see, for example, the core graph, the relation between function cores, but uh, eProof doesn't give you this information. So we actually, we want to achieve something uh, between eProof and eProof, means I want to get enough information for my, uh, for my analysis, but I also want to, doesn't want to slow down my system too much. So that's why we we added the, func the functional profiling to to Percept two, and the difference between Percept two's function profiling with others, um, so mainly the difference between F proof that is um, Percept two doesn't calculate its own uh, f her function's own execution time. This because. Um, um, you can only do this if you profile every function call, like both within the application and within your libraries. But the Percept allows you to specify which module you want to, and the functions define in which module you want to profile. So it doesn't go, depends on how many modules you specify, you only, only profile function defined in those modules. It doesn't give you competitive measure about the time spent on every function um, in the function in the run. And um, that's why we don't calculate uh, the own execution time. But in a way, it's much quicker. It, it creates less 
twisted, but it's, it's quick and it still give you a quite useful information here. And also, we try to make faster by allow you to uh, to selectively trace processes, which means because it's quite often uh, if you uh, the, the same process for lots of children process, and these two children process are actually doing very similar work. And for the core graph purpose, we don't want to generate a core graph for every process because it's very likely the core graph have a very similar structure. So we want to only want to see a few of them. Um, so that's why we want to um, selectively prof profiling those process which do a similar job. Uh, so at the moment, this is done by replacing the small functions in your code with the version provided by uh, Perceived2. But you only need to replace those small functions. But this reduces uh, the choice data quite a lot, because um, um, you um, only we, we depends on how many um, similar processes there are, we, we decrease the chance that, that a particular process is going to be profiled, but we still um, profile enough processes. Um, so for example, this example, this is version which I enabled the uh, function profiling. So basically, I'm profiling all of the, fun the modules from the uh, dialyze application, but not the library functions. And you see some of the PIDs are highlighted here. If, it's, if the PID is highlighted, it means there's a core graph um, generated for that process. Otherwise, it means there's no core graph. And you can see on only, only the gap between the highlighted process getting bigger because we reduced the chance of getting profiled. Um, so if you press, if you press this, I want to see the core graph for this page, and you just click on this page link, and then go to the the press the information page about this process, and you can see there's a um, link show core graph and time information here. You just click this link, and then we got core graph for this process. And it is, uh, I said it's context-aware process because we do not combine those nodes with the same function name. So it means you can see actually the core paths from this function to that function, so the paths are not combined. Um, you can uh, the label, uh, it means how many times that function is called. And also, in the bracket is how much um, time of the uh, lifetime of the process is spent on this function call. Um, so by looking at this core graph, uh, also, sorry, in the top eight, because in case you create a quite huge uh, core graph, you can simplify it by, by increase the threshold. And so by looking at this core graph, you know where most of the time of the process is spent. Um, and if you, want, if you want to investigate a particular function if, um, information, you can click the function, the node here, and give, go to the page uh, like for this function. But the only thing I think is added is about the time, how much actual, not percentage, how, how, how long, how much um, time the function is spent on this function. Um, so this um, this is a um, um, functional profiling, and another um, um, feature we add is support for distribution. Means you you can allows you to to trace in multiple nodes and then analyze those trace files in one together and shows shows you know, then this graph show you uh, shows you the communication between between nodes, so um, the x, um, axis is the time, the y is the, net, the size of messages. So every dot in the graph shows um, um, a message passing between two nodes. So this is still quite basic stuff here. Um, so th these are most of the functionalities we added to Percept. There's some other modes like, and also allows you to do sampling, profiling, and uh, also uh, another feature is if you click the function name, the node, we connect it to the actual code, for the, the Erlang code. So there's some other features added at the same time. 
Um, so next about the scalability of, um, of Percept. Uh, the, the original Percept was a, a sequential program. So you, de you take the, the trace file, you analyze the, the trace data one by one. And it's not very fast. So we, to make it scalable, we, we um, tried two things. The first, instead of analyze one trace file, we, we parallelized Percept to analyze um, multiple trace files in one go. Um, the another thing is um, within the analyzation of a single trace file, we also tried to parallelize it, so make it faster. Um, if you, when you have when you analyze multiple trace files, uh, still the result is combined com combined into one single result. You don't have multiple databases. Still create one single database, uh, as what as you said before. Um, so here uh, we we did a very simple test using the bench L, which is uh, another tool from the release project. Uh, this uh, shows the graph shows we I with with the parallelized version. Uh, the, scalability, the scalability of the parallel version. Here we've got uh, uh, five trace files, and the total is 1.360. Uh, here is number is the number of trace messages contained in these trace files. So we've got quite a nice um, a scale up. And so this is about the scalability. So as I said, we're adding more, still adding more features to Percept 2. Um, here is a small uh, case study that shows you how to actually um, um, make use of this information provided by Percept 2. Um, so one, um, is, I, I took Wrangler because I, it's a tool we have de developed so we know what's going on inside. And one uh, function of Wrangler is for um, code detection, is you, you find the duplicate code in your code base. So it, have, uh, it has a, uh, a number of stages. So first you have to pass files into AST after syntax tree, and then you have to flatten these, those STs into strings, and then you can do a string level com uh, um, clone detection, and then you got, uh, you got the candidate um, clones, and then you, you uh, check it to make sure there's no, to get rid of those false positives. So. Um, here, what you see, this, this uh, the original version. What if you profile it? This is what I, the the overview page looks. You, look, you can see, uh, most times there are only quite a small number of two or three processes are running. It's quite sequential. Um, uh, okay, can you detect variable renaming? Some people, when they cut and paste code, they, yeah, they yeah. change the variable name. <laughs> can you detect that? <laughs> uh, with Wrangler? Yeah. Um, yeah, could be, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. uh, when I go back to my code, I can <laughs> fix that problem? Okay, I'll try that. <laughs> um, so here's uh, the process uh, the tree, and if you compare the random bit of the processes, uh, you, you see here, because it's sequential, one of the processes is doing most of the job, and you see there's a, the, the process in the middle is, is spending a lot of time, but the other processes are all quite um, um, lightly loaded. And then we, we generate some, uh, we, we, we profile the, the functions as well and generate some core graph. And if you look at the core graph of this process, uh, the most important one, and here was, I, show, I show you the, uh, a simplified version because I use them, so make it smaller. Um, you, you immediately you can spot a few places you want to have a look. So first here, this, uh, I mean, this look, this is like, uh, uh, from the function name you can see, it's a list compression um, expression. And this one, you, you got the list for each, okay. Both of these take a lot of time, and another one, this one, this recursive function call also takes a lot of time. So you you, you spot a few places like your function which uh, takes most of the time, and if you look, uh, then you look at your code, you see, okay, can I parallel parallel this part? Uh, can I improve it? Um, so, like for example, for this um, list completion, actually, some cases kind it can be quite simple. You just do it very simple transformation and, and it's done. And so this is the actual code, the list completion. It takes a list of files and provides, and it it hash, it pass hash and generates the, the st. And uh, so very easily we can um, change the list compression to a parallel map. So uh, here's a 
<clears throat> and this library, Paralib, is a library I, I wrote myself, so just for, for experiments. But of course, you can write your own as well. And <clears throat> or you can use the libraries from yeah, Paraphrase. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and another case uh, for, the, for this one, at least for each, the code is like, it's also quite simple. You just take a list of the forms is a maps to every function in your uh, in the Erlang file, and, and you, you actually you pr uh, process every um, the st of every function. And then what we change we change to a parallel version of list for each. But here um, um, another thing is uh, the parallel because uh, sometimes you may not want to create too many processes. Um, and as you, say, you saw before, this, um, if you've got too many processes, then maybe some processes spend too much time on, on waiting around the moment, um, but they're not running. Um, so here you can control how many, <coughs> how, um, is, here you, you can chop a long list of elements into small lists. So here you can specify how many processes I want to spoil here. For example, it can be the number of um, schedulers as well. Um, and then if you look at this function, which is um, a recursive function called here, it, what takes, it takes a list of um, uh, clone candidates and analyze every one of it. Um, but it's a little bit harder than the simple ones because you can see um, there's, um, um, there's, uh, there's dependence between the uh, uh, consecutive um, recursion because the, you look at the, the num, num plus one here because you use the uh, data from the previous recursion. In that case, if you want to parallelize, you have to somehow get rid of the dependence. So this, for this case, we re-rotate re a bit, and so get rid of it, then we are able to use a, a parallel for each. Um, it's, it's quite, uh, sometimes can get hard, but of course you, you have to think about uh, um, not only dependence, but also side effects of the, the, all these things. But uh, sometimes you can really do it easily. Um, this is how we, we get off the dependence, and, and we use uh, the parallel version of 4 each. Um, so, so basically after three steps, we kind of um, um, transformed the the screenshot and clone detection to a parallel version. Um, and we, this is the, the graph um, you run after the parallelization. You can see the, we, we distribute work to more processes. But of course, it's not the end of the, of the thing. You can still do more and keep going until you got the perfect version. <coughs> um, but still, with the, those three factories, we, we also get quite nice um, uh, speed up. Um, so this case study, and um, we also have been doing some other work. <coughs> um, this particular with um, uh, our colleague um, Rob, and um, about um, visualization of um, <coughs> about uh, online visualization. <coughs> so um, as you see, this graph is um, uh, for visualizing the the, the um, uh, process migration between run queues and also the, the size of run queues. So this, uh, this um, was um, get from uh, running an Erlang application on the uh, 12 or, um, physical core, like 24 logical schedules. So <clears throat> uh, within the circle, you see the, the curved lines means the, the, the migration <coughs> of process from one run queue to another. And outside the circle, the bars here, it indicates the size of the wrong queue. So the dark color means um, the big size, and the, sm the light color means the um, um, smallest wrong queue size. Um, <clears throat> if you want to watch the, the full um, visualization, the video, you can take the link from uh, Simon's blog. You can see the animation um, there. Um, <clears throat> so another um, visualization is for and uh, visualizing the uh, communication between Erlang nodes. As I mentioned earlier, one of the ideas from a release project is S groups. Um, here I shows you um, four um, overlapping um, S groups. <coughs> and this, <coughs> this um, visualize shows you the communication between the nodes. 
um, you can so basically you can see the um, uh, grouping structure and also the communication between nodes. And so <clears throat> this is a um, visualization work of doing. Uh, yeah, so that's basically um, what we have done um, in, in recently. Um, we see in the context of release project, is a profiling tool, and uh, and also we are very uh, grateful for the Percept team for us to allow us to to extend Percept. Yeah, so that's that's all then. Any, any questions? Can you put the slide before the visu visualization, please? Just one before the visualization. Uh, before? Uh, and one before. Yeah. Oh, right. This looks like you get super perfect scalability. Yeah. How is that <laughs> possible? I mean, you add four, you add, you have four schedulers, and the speed up is four and a half. I, I yeah, okay. This part I I wasn't quite sure why, <laughs> but uh, this is um like if I. I this is, a, I think, the same test data with um, the sequential version, but I didn't try um, with other, other data. Um, um, but this is just a, for a particular case. I wasn't quite sure why this goes up. But this, uh, I, it was a, I got this graph using BenchL, just, just so BenchL is a round application uh, many times and then calculate how the, the speed and time, so draw this graph. <laughs> sure beats more slow. Uh, in your tables and uh, visualization parts about Percept 2, yeah. it would be nice to have registered names processes where you have PEATs, if they have any, of course, just for visual visualizing the data. So if a process ha has a registered name, it would be nice to see a, an actual name instead of PEAT. Oh, um, right, but, but some, sometimes the processes are not registered. So yeah, of course, yeah, so uh, if it's possible. Yeah, like, like this case, uh, we basically we don't see any uh, process names, because no, I think... Uh, ah, so, so you have yeah. this feature, if this the process is yeah. registered, then you show name. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah, so uh, I think that maybe not many, only if there's any, quite very few. <laughs> Yeah, another one. The, I see recently uh, from the OTP guys, I, I, I was looking but I couldn't find the reference. Uh, people are complaining about web-based tools and they're going towards WX widgets. Um, why did you choose web version and well, uh, what, the, what, the, what are the reasons it, for that? It wasn't me to choose because Percept original was using the web um, interface. So that's, we didn't change the interface. But we, we have some students who are trying to improve um, use HTML5 and then improve the interface. but. What do you think? Is it better to do it on, on such these kind of tools on, on web or, or WX widgets or something desktop platform? I'm not quite familiar with <laughs> WX widgets, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but in web it got a link, so everything can just click the links. <laughs> I think yeah, in, I think in some navigation situations it's actually easier to have something that's portable on, on the, in the browser. VX widgets, there are little quirks on the different platforms. So. More questions? Bring out your dad. Yes, there's another one. Okay, so in the process view, yeah. you see some, I guess, some timers of the function calls. Yes. So the question is, what are these timers? Is it own time or it's round time. time? It's not own time. It's own. Um, it's um, total time for this function. So is particular. there any possibility to distinguish between run time and wait time and function call graph? Run time and wait time. Uh, you have a. You can see uh, how much time it is suspend or garbage collect. You can see how much time you spend on those. Uh, it, like you got the suspend time. Means the process is not running. The function is. is um, okay. So, for example, I have some function that can that contains also also gets a recall. Yeah. And I need to figure out if it is the own time of this function or its time was spent waiting for receiving a um, message. Yeah, that's why. Um, because uh, you know, an F proof it gave you both own time and um, um, uh, total time, but that's. 
because you have to profile all the function calls. But we just thought that's too expensive for, for us. Yeah, but we, actually yeah. you don't need here to profile any function on time. Just process runtime during execution of this function and process total uh, time. Function, yes, you have some, um, uh, uh, you have some, um, the, this, this time, like um, the bracket, the time is the time spent on this function call. But you want to really go to detail within this function because um, percent allow you to specify which function or which module you want to profile and then you can supply those function names and. No, actually yeah. when I'm debugging performance on a multi-thread application, mm -hmm. I need to understand two things. So which functions are taking a lot of CPU and which yeah. are taking a lot of wait time. If you have a complex system that have a lot of multi-process yeah. interaction, in this graph it's complete, it's you, really you, essential. You can see, see the wait time in the process uh, information. Um, Here, the bottom bit shows how much time the, press, the function is spent on waiting for the, the bot here. Oh, okay. Uh, in the list that you had, uh, all the processes in the system yes. and uh, yeah. the graphs of them, yeah. is there a way for sorting them or? Uh, uh, this. Yeah, because if this is like thousands of processes, um, I know. Um, maybe for not for this. Okay, sure. Can maybe not for this one. Okay. Um, well, you can but there's some other pages. There's them some also, other pages huh? you can. You, I'm sure you can do. You can sort it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Then. Uh, Thank you, Hui Kuing. Thank you.